Street photography isn't my usual thing, and I know the X100F is a popular choice for it, but unlike people in landscapes, it's just not one of my strong points. I guess I've always seen the role of a street photographer more like a documentarian than as a painter. But of course, the best street photographers really are both. As for me, well, you know, I admit that I like to paint, if you will, more than I like to document. On a recent trip to Belfast, I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could approach street photography, this thing that I had always seen as kind of a factual record of reality, with more of an artistic approach instead. And I remember seeing photographs like this growing up on the other side of the Atlantic in the US, photographs that depicted the bomb attacks and the gun battles in Belfast. And at the time, of course, they were really shocking to see. Looking at them now, you can see clearly that they were taken with a photojournalistic intention in mind. But even then, there's still this kind of artistic quality to them. Take, for example, that last shot of the soldier and the boy. Now, I don't think that the photographer who took this photo could have staged it any better, even if he could. There's such a strong sense of symbolism here, and yet this was a candid snapshot, which is the intention of photojournalism and street photography. And to me, this is a really fascinating juxtaposition of both contrast and uniformity. You've got contrast in the age of the subjects, and obviously the effectiveness of their weapons. And yet despite that, there is this kind of uniformity in their expression, if you take a closer look there, and the fact that they're both wielding weapons, whether they're for real or for play is another matter. And to me, this is a visual metaphor for history repeating in a way, because I can't help but wonder if the boy in the photo was destined to follow the cycle of the soldier he's mimicking. In any case, it's a great example of how real life can be documented, whether it's newsworthy or not, with an eye for art. So with the history of the Troubles in mind, I guess I didn't really know what to expect Belfast to be like 20 years after the Good Friday Agreement was signed, which is what historically marks the end of the Troubles. 20 years is really not that much time in terms of history, so by the time I got to Belfast, I never would have imagined it to be a city with such a violent past. Because today there's this tangible feeling of vibrancy on what feels like every street corner with businesses and cultural events and street art. And not to mention that the people were just so helpful and friendly. And I know you hear this about almost every place in the world. I mean, it's almost become like a cliche, but I have to say that it was probably one of the things that I enjoyed the most about Belfast. So with this fascinating contrast between its past and present, I decided on shooting Belfast in classic chrome, which is the moodiest of all the film simulations on the X100F, at least that I feel. There's just, there's just a certain magic to it that feels poetic to me. What I'll do is just I'll walk through a selection of the shots that I took in Belfast and just talk you through what my creative process was for each of them. Now, for the first thing that I attempted to shoot, I came across this gigantic mural of a professional cook. Very imposing because of the sheer size of it. It was just huge. And on top of that, the expression on his face of being concerned and maybe even kind of angry makes it even more imposing. So I tried it from a lot of different angles 
And being in such a, t a such a tight space, I found it difficult to frame it in any kind of interesting way. So then I thought, okay, well, let's just shoot it straight on. And then <laughs> the new challenge became, you know, I could only back up so far to fit everything in and at least you see nothing but the clouds, the building, and the mural. Next up, I found this colorful wool, and I thought, okay, this is a cool composition on its own, but I think it would be better if there were people in it. So let me just force myself to wait a little bit longer to see who's gonna walk by. And it just so happened, literally 15 seconds later, there were three men who walked into the frame. I love the synchronicity of this moment because you've got the man in the front with a blue blazer, blue jeans, against the blue part of the mural. It's just so perfect. And then five seconds later, there were two younger guys who walked into the frame, but in the opposite direction. And, you know, this shot is pretty cool too, but I feel like the other guys were better dressed. And again, I just love the synchronicity between the colors on the subjects and in the background. So that's when I ended up posting on Instagram. Then I walked around a little bit more and then I came across more street art with this brick wall on a cobblestone street. And you know, it looks historic. There's visually, it's very interesting. And this first shot had a car in it and I didn't like it. So I decided to wait a little bit longer. So I took a blank slate shot and nobody interesting in the foreground there yet. But I did notice these two girls walking in the distance. And then it became clear pretty soon that they were going to walk towards the camera, towards me. So I got low to the ground just to get more of an interesting angle. And I waited for them to get right by the sandwich board, which already has some nice, interesting typography on it. And I snapped it right there. I'm pretty proud of this shot. So by this time I'm thinking, okay, well, I think I'm getting the hang of this. You know, I can find an interesting location, frame it just the way that I like it, and then just wait a few moments for an interesting human subject to enter into the frame. So I decided to try it one more time. And here's a clean shot of a beautiful, charming, typical street in Belfast. And again, we've got some cobblestone with some string lights and planters on either side. It's very quaint. So I took a few shots, but it didn't seem like there was going to be any interesting subjects walking into the frame anytime soon. So I decided to move into the street a bit more and I started shooting the individual businesses on the streets. And you know, these are nice, but it's nothing special, I feel. So then I saw this sign with uh, this writing Donegal Square North on it. And later I found out that this is not actually Donegal Square, but at the time, I thought, okay, well, let me just focus on the sign just to give it a sense of place. So I took this first shot and just for good measure, I took a second shot and I wasn't even really paying attention to what was going on outside of the sign. So it just so happened that this guy looked straight at the lens while I took the shot. And I admit that this was pure luck in a way, but this just goes to show that street photography can be this delicate dance between luck and intention. Speaking of intention, I never really got the X100F with the explicit intention of doing street photography, but because of its design, because it's so small and light and discreet, it's very well suited for street photography, so I thought I'd give it a shot. And I gotta say, it really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Street photography hasn't become my latest, greatest creative obsession, but I do have to say that I feel more confident now in my ability to document reality with more of a sense of beauty. Now, I don't know just quite yet how this experience will affect my photography moving forward, but what I do know is that it has inspired me to question other areas of my creative practice where I have allowed myself to get a little too comfortable. So I'm curious, you know, what about you? What's one thing you can do to give yourself that tiny, just slightly uncomfortable push to get you out of your creative comfort zone.